eating at Food Network Star restaurants in Las Vegas for a full day. First up, Bobby Flay for his Bobby's Burger restaurants. For my lunch, I started with the house-made onion rings, which is more like an onion brick. They were good, but the batter kept falling off, which was not a fan of. Next, the bacon crunch burger, which was topped with potato chips, a signature move by Bobby Flay. Now the burger, it was good. The meat was juicy and overall, I enjoyed it. Later for dinner, I went to Giada De Laurentiis' Vegas Italian restaurant. I got the four course tasting menu for $120. Started with the arugula salad with pancetta, which was decent. Then the dish Giada is most known for, the spaghetti al limone, which I have to give credit where credit is due. The pasta was super al dente and chewy in the best way. Then the chicken marsala with gnocchi, which had a really great deep flavor as well. And finally for dessert, I got the tiramisu, which had a little cookie inside. And finally, here's a pro tip. The tasting menu portions are actually smaller, so skip it unless you want the included souvenir booklet with a photo of Giada and recipes. And as always, follow for more food adventures. Only eating at Gordon Ramsay restaurants in Las Vegas for a full day. So if you don't know, Gordon Ramsay has a full on empire in Vegas with more restaurants than I can count sprinkled all over the city. I started my day with Gordon's Fish and Chip Shop, which had a line out the door and they were cranking out fresh fried goods in huge quantities. And I've never had proper fish and chips in England, but Gordon's Fish and Chips with some of their tartar sauce were the best I've ever had. Super crispy, light and moist, I was shocked. Now the chips themselves, they were average, nothing super special about them. Later for dinner, I went to Gordon Ramsay's Pub and Grill, which I guess is supposed to model like an old pub with chairs that have dogs on them. Started with my first ever scotch egg, which is a soft boiled egg covered in sausage and deep fried. Pretty good. Next, it was on to the Ramsay Classic, the Shepherd's Paw, which is a healthy American sized portion. This is a lamb stew topped with mashed potatoes, really delicious, but it came with a side of mushy peas, which were minty and not my thing. Overall, delicious food from Ramsay, and follow for more food adventures. Eating at Food Network Star restaurants for a full day. First up, Paula Dean. Her restaurant serves up comfort food dishes in a family style. To start, you get served warm biscuits that are made up of probably 90% butter in true Paula Dean fashion. Then the meal arrived quickly right after. Fried chicken, ribs, salad, collard greens, cream corn, and mac and cheese. What a spread. Everything served was good, but nothing really was great other than the collard greens, which I really liked. And did I mention that you can get unlimited refills of whatever you want? Then the desserts, which are included in all meals at Paula Dean's restaurant. I got the peach cobbler and the gooey butter cake, which were just all right. After checking out the butter gift shop, I mean the Paula Dean gift shop, I headed straight to Flavortown, specifically Guy Fieri's Kitchen Bar. These Food Network stars love selling their merch at their restaurant. I had to get the Guy's famous trash can nachos, and while I waited, I watched the man himself. Here is the trash can spectacle in all its glory. And as much as I wanted to hate on the preparation of the nachos, it's actually a really great way to serve it because the toppings are evenly dispersed. There's no naked chips here. My issue with the trash can nachos is that some of the chips, I don't know what happened, but they were stale and it got stuck in my teeth. If you want to see some really good barbecue nachos, check out the video I posted yesterday. Follow for more food adventures. This is my new favorite celebrity chef restaurant in Las Vegas, and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to get. So this is best friend by LA celebrity chef Roy Choi. They have a cool bodega-like bar in the front and a speakeasy style dining in the back, complete with a DJ. So best friend is a Korean Mexican fusion spot. And when you sit down, you get a free pillowy warm roll, which might be the only good free thing in Vegas. For the meal, you have to get the spicy pork barbecue, which is thinly sliced pork with onions and the kimchi fried rice with a poached egg, but more on that later. The pork is crispy, spicy, salty, tender. It's so good and not to be outdone by the kimchi fried rice, which just look how much seasoning is in this rice. It's seriously so good. It'll make you feel good even if you lost all your money outside of the casino like me. And for dessert, get the date cake with salted caramel ice cream. It's fire. Add this spot to your next time you go to Vegas. And if you want more Vegas recommendations, check out the playlist below. And as always, make sure to follow for more food adventures. Only eating at the Cake Boss's restaurants in Las Vegas for a full day. So right behind Gordon Ramsay in terms of the number of celebrity restaurants in Vegas has to be Buddy Belastro. Not only is the New Jersey TV baker's face all over the city, but you'll find his cake vending machine everywhere. He even has his own pizza vending machines in Vegas, which I've already made a video review on. But for today, I started with cake. Well, pizza cake.
They serve just two things, pizza and cake. And I did like that some of the tables were cakes. Nice touch, buddy. I got the classic pepperoni and sausage pizza. Overall, it was just an average slice. Not bad by any means, but not special either. But at $9, it's just overpriced. For my next meal, I stopped by the official Carlos Bakery, which is the franchise that started all in Hoboken, New Jersey. They're known for their cannolis, and I have high standards for my cannolis. I got the birthday cake one. Again, it wasn't bad, just nothing super special. Later, I went to Buddy's Food Market style eatery called the Boss Cafe, which has different Italian stations, including a Mott's bar, which go in their Jersey style sandwiches. I got the Italian sandwich, and this, it was the best thing I ate all day. The Mott's in the sandwich was actually really good. Yeah, a little overpriced for the sandwich, but it was still the best thing I ate all day. What celebrity chef should I eat next? And make sure to follow for more food adventures.